Zama Um Saba Wakre Puga Namache Nempela Lo Uyinto Danagatiko Hey Wazama Zama Wazama Zama Hey Um Saba Wakre shout hallelujah glory be to God in the highest on behalf of our mommy and wife of the regional pastor of RCCGSA2 pastor Mrs. Anaibitayo 
I wish to humbly welcome all our sisters to the second day of the 2020 RCCG South Africa National Sisters Conference with the theme, Positive Turnaround. Amen. I also wish to recognize and welcome our Father in the Lord in the region, Pastor E.A. Bitayo. Daddy, you are most welcome to our conference, sir. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. At today's program, we shall be having four sessions. The first session will be taken by the wife of the PIC, South Africa Province 4, in the person of Pastor Mrs. Odum Oduwale. She will focus on turn things around for my family. Amen. The second, the second session will be taken by the wife of PIC South African Nation, Pastor Dr. Mrs. Yemisi Akerele, and the topic is a cry to God. Hallelujah. The third session will be a health talk, and this will be taken by the wife of the PIC Pretoria Zone, Pastor Dr. Mrs. Funke Mbajogo. Amen. The last session, which is a talk two, the main talk for this conference on our theme, Positive Turnaround, will be taken by our Father in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Ibitayo, the Special Assistant to the General Overseer and Regional Pastor, RCCG, Southern African Region 2. Amen. I wish you the best in this conference. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? Father, I commit day two of this conference into your hands. Father, anoint all the speakers and use them to your glory. Impact everyone present at this conference. Let everyone experience you mightily and let the church of God march forward in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. National Sisters Convention. As we know, the theme for this year's convention is a um, positive turnaround. I bless God for all what he has been doing in our lives since yesterday, and I pray that God who had started that turnaround will continue through today, even to eternity, in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to be praying for the next 10 minutes, and um, the text of our prayers, the, the topic of our prayers is, Lord, turn things around for my family. Lord, turn things around for my family. And I'm taking my text from the book of um, 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, and my focus text is verse 11. It says, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gigite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. The act of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gigite for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now briefly, the background to that story was that um, the heart of the Lord had been in Abinadab the priest's house for 20 years. The Bible records that the, all Israel lamented after the ark was, after the ark that had been in the house of Obededom for, um, in the house of Abinadab for 20 years. So King David decided to move the ark to Jerusalem. And in the process of that, uh, the, the oxen that the ark was on stumbled and Uzzah, the, the son of the priest, stretched forth his hand in what he thought was a preventive measure to prevent the ark from falling down. And um, God was not happy with him, and um, he was slain there and there. And uh, David got upset, and he got scared, and he diverted the ark into the house of Obededon. 
and that is where we got, that's what led to this text. Brethren, three things we'll be praying about from here. Remember, our topic is, Lord, turn my family around positively, Lord. Turn my family around for good. The first thing I'd like to bring to your notice, or to remind you of, is that the ark in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, represents the presence of God. It represents the presence of God. That was where God, as it were, dwelt. And I thank God for what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Because of him, we no longer have, uh, the, the presence of God is no longer restricted to a physical place. Hallelujah. So when we talk about bringing in the ark now, we are talking about bringing in the presence of God into our families. So we are going to pray. And the first prayer point is this. We are going to pray for the heads of our families. You see, when King David uh, was looking for somewhere, this is an act that has just killed somebody. It took courage for, for Obededon to say, bring it to me, to receive it. I'm sure he, he received it, you know, quaking in his boots, but he still received it. I, I want us to pray. I want us to rise on our feet and to begin to pray for the heads of our families that God destroy the courage, the grace to bring your presence into our homes, into our families. Lord, that you will give unto them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Our Father and our God, our Lord and Master, we bless you, O God Almighty. We pray for our husbands at the heads of our homes, my Father. Daddy, that you will give them the grace to bring your presence, my Father, into the home, my God. Daddy, that they will not say, they will not think of the cost of the, what it might cost them physically. That they will not say, oh, if I become more committed to God now, I will have less time for my business. If I, have, if I become more committed to God now, I will have less time for, for my career. But Lord God Almighty, that they will be strong, oh God, and that they will bring the, co the act of covenant into, into, the, into the, our homes. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The second thing we see from that verse 11, he says, the Lord blessed Obed Edom. And that's what we want to pray about. You see, God is, is, is an individual God as well as a collective God. You know, there he says, the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. We will get to the all his household part. But God mentioned the name Obededom specifically. And God turned things around for his household within three months. This lockdown had been all, just about three months. And the, we are going to pray that Father, bless me. You know your name. And you know the names of the members of your household. You, 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 you will pray. We, we, we as women, we are the ones who are you know, oftentimes in constant communion with God. We are the one who oftentimes bring in the act, bring in the presence of God into our families. We are going to pray. Father, as it is written in your word that you blessed Obed Edom, Lord, bless me in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Sisters, shall we pray? Lord, we, I pray, O oh God Almighty, my Father, that, that as I continue in communion with you, as I continue in prayers, my Father, as I continue to tarry in your presence, O oh God Almighty, my Father and my God, as I continue to bring in your presence into my family, Lord, turn things around and bless me, my Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And finally, the Bible says, and all his household, all his household, as I meditated on this, I discovered that there is a difference between household and family. But time will not permit us to go into that. But I want us to pray that, Lord, you will bless all of my household and my family in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Brethren, open your mouth and pray for all your household, the people that are currently living under your roof. It means that even if Obededom had uh, a, 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 a servant, the Lord blessed that servant. If he had a slave, the Lord blessed the slave. Anybody that was part of that household, the Lord blessed. And I want us to pray, Lord, even my family that are not currently living under my roof, some of us have parents in other countries, but they are part of the family. They may not be part of the household, but they are part of the family.
family. Lord, bless me, bless my household. Turn things around positively for us. Turn things around, Father, positively for us in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Daddy, we pray, O oh God Almighty, my Father, Daddy, that you turn things around for everyone under our roof or part of our family that is not currently dwelling under our roof. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Uh, we bless God for this session and we pray that God who can do exceedingly abundantly beyond that which we ask or think will continue to bless us and continue to turn things around for us positively in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. And God willing, next year, by his grace, we shall reconvene again for another sister's conference by his special grace. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Women of God, I greet you and I thank God for this year's opportunity to be able to meet again despite the worldwide pandemic. I congratulate you for making this convention themed positive turn around. My prayer is that indeed all negative issues will be turned around for good for us all in Jesus name. Happy convention sisters and uh, happy watching. For a while now, I have been burdened and troubled in my spirit for those of us that are hurting in one way or the other. And God is going to turn the hurts, the pain, the burden around for good for all of us in the name of Jesus. We are going to look into three case studies and we are going to pray this evening. Our first case, case study is going to be taken from the book of 1 Samuel and I start to read from verse 14 to 19. It was, you all know the story, is the story of our mother Hannah who was barren for many years. And it got to a point in verse 14, the Bible says that she prayed so much that Eli said unto her, how long will thou be drunken? But she said, I am not drunken, my Lord. But in verse 17, she says, in verse 16 rather, it says, Count not thy handmaiden for the daughter of Belia, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken hitherto. She had a lot of complaint and a lot of grief. But in verse 17, Eli said unto her, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And if you go to verse 19, the Bible says that when they had returned from worship and came into their house to Ramah, Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. Are you going through complaint? Are you having a lot of complaint? Are you grieving? Lord will remember you today. And the Bible says that she conceived and she bare a son, Samuel. So our first prayer point is going to be, Father, we're going to say, Father, remember me today in the name of Jesus. Remember me out of my grief, out of my many complaints. Remember me, O Lord. Turn it to prayers. He did it for Hannah. He can do it for you. The Lord of positive turnaround. We turn around our complaint, our, our pain, our grief, our lack to abundance. God will remember us today in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless your name, O oh God, because like Hannah, you remember all of us 
that have prayed this prayer this evening in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Our second case study that we are going to look at is the blind Bartimaeus. And we can go open our Bibles to Mark chapter 10. And I read from verse 46 to about 49. You know the story. The Bible says that as Jesus was entering into Jericho, and as he was going with his disciples, with a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side, and he was doing what? He was begging. 47, and when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Are you going to cry out today? He began to cry out. Our theme for this prayer session is a cry for help. Blind Bartimaeus cried out. Hannah cried out to the Lord. When you cry out, you are crying out to God. Don't look at who is to your left or to your right. You are crying unto God. The Bible says that blind Bartimaeus cried out to God. And he says, son of David, have mercy on me. And you know that the Lord had mercy on him. So our second prayer point for this session is, Father, have mercy on me. Son of David, Jesus, have mercy on me. The father of the fatherless, the father of the widows and the widowers, have mercy on me. The father of all, have mercy on me. Let's turn it to prayers, brethren. Let's turn it to prayers. Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me in this time and season. Through this pandemic, oh God, my father, as the lockdown comes to an end, have mercy on me. Open the doors for me. Remember what Daddy Gio said during the Holy Ghost service, that after this lockdown, a lot of doors, a lot of doors of breakthroughs will be open for us. Father, have mercy on me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And then we go to our last case study today. And it is the story of uh, the ten virgins. It is the story of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25 from verse uh, 1 to 7. We will not read all of it, but this is a cry for the, for the sisters that are looking unto God for spiritual breakthroughs. They want to do exploits for God, but one way or the other you keep making mistakes. One way or the other you keep sleeping. This is a time for us to cry. Remember, it is the story of the ten virgins. Five wise and there are five foolish virgins. The difference between the wise virgins and the foolish virgins was that the wise made sure they always had oil in their lamp. To make it quicker for us today, oil stands for the anointing, the presence of God in our life. We need to remain in God's presence. We need God to always be with us. He's always there, but we need to be with God. We need to remain in God's presence. So we are going to cry unto God. Or before I go there, the Bible says in verse 6 that there was, at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Brethren, in the time as this, the bridegroom can come at any time. We must ensure that we remain in the presence of God. So we are going to cry and we are going to say, Father, Father, help me to never lack oil in any way. Help me not to leave your presence. Help me to remain in your presence. Let's turn it to prayers in the name of Jesus. Let's turn it to prayer in the name of Jesus. Help me to always have enough oil in my lamp. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor. We exalt and magnify your name for this time, O oh Lord. We cry unto you from the bottom of our hearts. Lord, as for as many of us as are grieving, as many of us as are in pain, as many of us as do not know where the next house rent will come from, as many of us as are still trusting you for a job, for a business breakthrough, we are holding on to you in this time and season. That God, you will turn things around for our good. 
As our daddy will be ministering in the word very soon. Father, Lord God, touch us through the word. Turn things around for us. Through, at the end of this weekend, oh God, turn things around for us. Help us to continue to remain in your presence. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. We give God all the glory for making this year's National Sisters Convention South Africa possible. We give God all the praise uh, for giving us this opportunity that despite the situation at this time, the lockdown, we are still able to be together. All the praise, all the glory be to his holy name. Uh, the topic I have before me is the health talk today. And I will be talking on the chronic medication use and fasting. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to give you all the thanks, all the praise, because you are our Father. You are the King of glory. You are the God, Jehovah Rapha, the God that desires that we should be in health. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Father, we pray that you take control over all that we will speak on today, that it shall be a blessing to everyone that is a partaker of this program. It shall be a blessing to me also. Jehovah, I pray that you have your way. Take control. Let me speak only what you want me to speak that will benefit the lives of your children. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Our topic, I say again, is chronic medication use and fasting. Yes, we all know what fasting is. It's abstinence from food, sometimes in addition to water for a given time. And I will be focusing on two types of fasting here, which is what I know is more popular in the redeemed Christian Church of God, which is the absolute fasting where there will be no food or water for the whole period of the fasting. It can be for 24 hours or even for as long as 30 days or more. Another one that is more common, which most of us do, is abstaining from food and or water from between 12 midnight to 6 p.m. of one day, or for every day throughout the duration of the fast. We commonly do this for 40 days, 50 days, or even more or less. Praise the Lord. And we know uh, the purpose of fasting. There are so many of them. Jesus also gave us example. In Luke 4, verse 1 to 2, Jesus fasted to acknowledge his dependence and to gain spiritual strength. In Nehemiah 1.4, we saw that Nehemiah fasted for a breakthrough. David fasted in Psalm 35 verse 13 for healing. In 2 Samuel 12, 16 to 17 and 23, he fasted for miraculous intervention. Mordecai in Esther 4, 3, fasted because of the deliverance of the Jews. The early church also fasted in Acts 13, verse 2, chapter 14 and 23 for divine guidance and direction. The list is endless. Praise the Lord. We realize that fasting forms a, a, a background and the, the, the purpose for fasting forms a background of why many Christians, even though on chronic, on chronic medication, 
will want to fast. The Bible in Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 12, talks about the way God wants us to, f to fast and the benefits that we derive from fasting when we do it rightly. Chronic medication is used by people with chronic medical conditions, or we can call it chronic diseases. And this is, when we talk about a chronic disease or a chronic medical condition, this is a condition that persists for a long time, lasting greater than three months or more. Examples of chronic diseases are hypertension, diabetes mellitus, heart diseases, arthritis, asthma, cancers, thyroid problems. These are diseases that cannot be prevented by vaccines or cured by medications. But thank God, because we are children of the Most High King, our Jehovah Rapha. In Luke 1, the Bible says, with God, nothing is impossible. So for medicine, it can be said to be incurable diseases. But for God, it is curable. Hallelujah. So for anyone that may be having a chronic disease, hold on to the word of God. It is possible to be cured. Amen. They are usually controlled. These chronic diseases are usually controlled by medications. They are more common with increasing age. And our God is a good God. He will do in our lives what he did in the life of Caleb. As recorded in Joshua 14 from verse 7 to 12, where Caleb actually said that after 45 years, that means he was 80, he still said, give me that mountain, because he's still as strong as he was when he was 40 years old. Hallelujah. There are spiritual benefits and health benefits of fasting. Therefore, Christians who want to fast, despite being on chronic medications, are encouraged to fast but with caution. Hallelujah. Note, it must be with caution. Luke 5, 31 and Matthew 9, 12. Jesus said, they that are sick are the ones that need a physician. So he recognizes that the sick people will need to be seen by doctors. Hallelujah. And by other healthcare professionals. Before embarking on a fast, Anyone on a chronic medication has to consult a doctor to assess the overall health to determine whether or not you can fast based on whether the chronic medical conditions is controlled well on the present medications that you are using or not. A person who is on chronic medication may not be able to carry out the absolute fast. That is where you are not going to be eating any food or drinking water for 24 hours or more. But such a person will be able to do a fast from midnight to 6 p.m. as the doctors can make necessary adjustments to the chronic medication dosages. Hallelujah. And determine the best time to take them. They can be changed to long-acting ones and single daily doses that can be taken after breaking the fast at 6 p.m. Since medications do not need to be taken with food, such as antithyroid, uh, praise the Lord, some medications do not need to be taken with food, such as the antithyroid medications. So this kind of medications can be taken in the mornings, with a cup of water. I personally am on anti-thyroid medication and I take mine early in the morning, even though I'm fasting with a cup of water and I still go on through the day to fast till 6 p.m. Praise the Lord. When on anti-hypertensive treatment, you need to drink some fluids and unsweetened natural juices during the day and plenty of fluids at the time of breaking the fast to avoid tests, dehydration, and other complications. Also, eating fruits and vegetables is very important as they contain potassium, which can control high blood pressure. Diabetes mellitus is, is, a, is the most challenging condition to manage during fasting. 
Fasting can be possible, but a lot of caution is required when you are a diabetic patient. And it is very important to consult your healthcare prov provider because the provider has to teach you about regular checks. Monitoring the blood sugar is advised at home, and you have to be well aware of the signs and symptoms of decreased blood glucose and increased blood glucose. Praise the Lord. Please, let anyone who is diabetic, especially those on insulin, be very cautious when embarking on a fast. Also, we have the non-oral dosage forms of medication that can be used during fasting without breaking the fast. Those non-oral ones are like those eye drops, hair drops, nasal uh, sprays, analgesia, that is pain relief medications also come in dosage forms of injections and suppositories so they can be used through the other routes anal routes they can be used through uh, the vaginal routes they can be used through injections praise the lord when it is an acute infection though requiring antibiotics and adequate pain relief fasting can be stopped and the medication used properly but analgesia and antibiotics can also be changed. The dose can be changed to be in daily doses. In conclusion, let us always remember that our God loves us so much. And in our embarking on a fast, when on chronic medication, we should apply caution, knowing that God would not allow us or want us to do anything that will harm our bodies. Jeremiah 29, 11, God was, was telling us there that he loves us so much. His ex, his, 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 you know, his thoughts for us are thoughts of good, not of evil, to give us a future and a hope. Hallelujah. So fasting with an illness can be challenging, but not impossible. But of note again. There are healthy ways one can fast, even with an illness. But your health care provider must be consulted. Ted John, verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Ecclesiastes 10, 10b says, Wisdom is profitable to direct. The Lord will help us and give us more wisdom as we decide to embark on a fast, even when we're on chronic medication. In Jesus' name, amen. Let somebody shout, hallelujah. Wahamalati, oh wahamalati. We thank God for all our speakers that spoke in the first session. And now it's time for us to take our offering. To take our offering, we are going to be reading from the Word of God in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Luke 6, 38, I read. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. The word of God is telling us today that in the same measure that we give to him is what he is going to give to us. So I'll employ us to consider that offering that we are going to give to God. If you have more than you are thinking you want to give now, Please give because I know that our God is a rewarder and he will give you bountifully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us who want to EFT, please look at the screen now and you will see the account number of National Women of Grace. And then you can EFT your offering to that account. But for those of you who have your envelopes with you, please Make sure that these envelopes get to the national headquarters. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you richly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you, Almighty God, for this conference. We thank you for all our women. I pray and I decree that even as we give to you, Father, please give back unto us in hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. How many of us believe this? There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Follow me, say, chain, break, chain. Come on, say, chain, break, chain, say, chain, break. Come on, I need you to declare the chains to break. No, 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 no. Say, chain, break, chain. I want to welcome all our sisters, all our mothers in the Lord. Permit me to say regional sisters to this wonderful convention. May the Almighty God bless all your families in Jesus' name. Please shall we pray. Father, we want to say thank you for everything that you have done. I said our praises in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for this season in this nation, South Africa. Thank you for your church. Your church is moving on, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. I said our praises in Jesus' mighty name. As we study together for these few minutes, we pray that we open our eyes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you to this special session. I thank God for the lives of all the people that the Lord had used before us. And I pray that the Almighty God will make this one the icing of the cake to the glory of His name. Now the theme for this program is positive turnaround. And the text I want us to examine is Psalm 126, verse 1. You can read the whole chapter because of time. The Bible says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. When the Lord turned again 
the captivity of Zion, who were like them that dream. When the Lord brought the captivity of Zion to an abrupt end, it was like a dream. God is about to bring an abrupt end to a long time problem during this season. God is about to turn somebody's sorrow to joy before this time tomorrow. He's about to turn things around for all of us to the glory of his name. You may want to ask, what is a turnaround? Number one, a turnaround is an abrupt or unexpected change, especially that results in a more favorable situation. A turnaround is an abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a more favorable situation. If you look at the book of Joel, chapter 2, from verse 24 to 26. Joel chapter 2, from verse 24 to 26, the Bible says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. I say, Amen. The canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, verse 25, uh, 26 says, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. That's a positive turnaround. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Number two, you turn around is a change for the better. A turnaround is a change for the better. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9, the Bible says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we don't speak. I am fully persuaded that God is going to do better things for each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are saved already, but I'm fully persuaded concerning the better things that God will bring your way, things that accompany salvation. You may then want to ask, what is a positive turnaround? If you turn around, it's a change for the better. What then is a positive turn around? Don't you think it's tautology? No. A positive turn around is a change for the best. One is for the best better. This one is for the best. Your best is yet to come. You are going from good to better. And somebody is going from better to best in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So if the Bible is saying we should covet the best gifts, positive turnaround should be your portion. You must convert it. Your best is yet to come. And you will get there. So the central focus of this message, therefore, is change. It is not just a change, but a radical change. It is not just a radical change. It is a remarkable change. At the end of this convention, we expect a remarkable change 
in every life, in every home, in every family. God wants your health to experience a positive turnaround. He wants your home to experience a positive turnaround. He expects your business, whatever you are doing for a living, to experience a positive turnaround. He also wants every dryness in your life to come to an end in the name of Jesus. So the question is, how can you experience a positive turnaround? We look at five points. Number one, you can experience a positive turnaround through the power in the word of God. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1, 1 to 3, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God is speaking to every department of your life right now by the power in His Word. And there is going to be a turnaround. Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent His Word and healed them and deliver them from their destructions. Wherever you are, because distance is not a barrier for my God, the word is coming to you life, changing every situation for the better and even for the best in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the word of God has the power to transform any situation. Number two, through a prophetic release from a real man of God, you can experience a positive turnaround. There are so many men of God, but we're talking of real men of God. A prophetic release from a real man of God will bring a positive turnaround. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, Then Elisha said, and I'm saying the same thing. Hear ye the word of God, of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Elisha released something over the city of Samaria that within 24 hours, there will be a positive turn around. And it happened. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, Say ye to the righteous that they shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So I speak into every area of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your families. It shall be well with your businesses. It shall be well with your children. You tomorrow will be all right. Whatever you are going through right now, the Almighty God will see you through. There will be a positive turnaround. You will give testimony very, very soon. Every siege over your family will soon be over in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, how can you experience a positive turnaround? Through your own personal confession. Through your own personal confession. Confession brings possession. What have you been saying concerning your life? What have you been saying concerning your situation? If you check the word of God, the second king, chapter 4, verse 26, you will see the story of that Shunammite woman there. She just lost her son and she ran to meet with the man of God, Elisha. And the Bible says, when Elisha saw her coming, he sent his servant 
with these words. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. That was somebody who left a child that was dead at all. And she was confronted with three questions. To all the questions, her answer was, it is well. I want to ask you the same question. Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the children? I don't know what your answer is. But I believe your answer should be, it is well. There is going to be a positive turnaround. And because she said that one, everything was well. Beware of what you say with your mouth. Psalm 118, verse 17. Psalm 118, verse 17. The Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I want you to say the same thing with me. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That shall be your portion. You will not die. You won't die young. In the name of Jesus, every good thing that you have lost will be restored. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, every negative prophecy over your life is cancelled. Every negative thing you have said concerning your children is reversed. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be careful what you say with your mouth. Number four. How can you experience a positive turnaround? You can experience it through your personal prayer. Your personal prayer. Somebody can pray for you, but you should be able to pray. You don't need prayer contractors. As a woman of faith, as a woman of God, as a mother, you should be able to pray. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, you know what is there. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. His mother called his name Jabez. That was a mother. God forgive that mother. Saying, because I bear him with sorrow. How can you give her to his son, a child, and call his name sorrow? So anytime they call that but they say, sorrow call more. No way. But thank God that he prayed. And he said, the Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Time will fail me to begin to look at other people that prayed. But somebody we must not forget it's a Hannah. Hannah prayed. She, was, she had been going to Shiloh with her husband and with the other woman, Penina. But at the end of the day, a particular Shiloh, in a particular Shiloh, she went before the Lord and cried, and God changed her story. She experienced a turning point. A positive turn around. You must go to God personally in prayer. Make personal efforts to go to the Lord in prayer. Prayer can bring about the change that you desire. Prayer can change the situations in our nations. If only we can come together. God can use our mothers, can use our sisters to change the situation in our nation. As I close, Number five, you can experience a positive turnaround through a positive change in your own life. A positive change in your own life. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
determined to change your ways. As you give your life to Jesus Christ, change your ways. Everything must change. Nothing changes until you effect a change. Nothing changes until you change. The stain in your life, that stain in your life, may not be erased until you change. Your grade as a student will not change except you change. Your position will not change unless you change your posture. Permit me to say again that you cannot experience a change until you change your language. Your marriage will experience a change when you change your ways. Oh, you don't know my husband? Oh, you don't know these children? No, it's about you. Let the change start with you. Charity must begin right from home. Look inwards. Change your ways. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at will change. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at will change. We cannot afford to behave like Ephraim, as I close. Do you know the story of Ephraim? In Hosea chapter 7, verse 1, God had this to say concerning Ephraim. Hosea 7, verse 1, When I will have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. For they, committed, they, co for they commit falsehood, and the thief committing, and the troop of robber, robbers spoiled without. Verse 8 says, as I close, Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Ephraim is a cake not turned. You know the meaning of that one? You can't experience a positive turnaround if yourself you are not turned, if there's no change in your life. I want us to bow down our heads in time like this. I will begin to pray and say, Father, give me the grace to change my ways as from today. Give me the grace to change my ways as from today. Open a fresh page in the history of my family, O oh God. Open a fresh page in the history of my family. And let every stain that is attached to my life be erased by your grace. Father, let every stain that is attached to my life be erased. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, I commit your children into your hands. Let your power be made available unto them. Let your grace be made available unto them. Let there be a change for the best in every home, in every life, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let there be a positive turnaround to the glory of your name in all in every area of their lives, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Yeah.